to the Cantonese millennial one to Maybe they... A recent LA Times article stated that only 10% of new Chinese restaurants opening are Cantonese. That means along with large seafood and dim sum restaurants closing their doors, the number of Cantonese restaurants in America is decreasing. Between different regional Chinese foods gaining popularity, the fact that the second generation doesn't want the traditional Chinese wedding receptions, and also along with the fact that maybe just some restaurants weren't well ran, this kind of makes us think, where does it go from here? What's going on, everybody? Welcome to a very special investigative reporting episode of the Hot Pop Boys. You guys, we have been investigating a lot of a lot lately. Here with us today, we got Nelson Chan from Hoopin' Life. It's only right that I'm here, man. Cancel food, cancel guys. Guys, we are gonna be doing a brand new Cantonese food series to show where Cantonese food is at right now in 2020 and where it's headed. By the way, guys, we are doing a giveaway at the end of this video, so wait for the questions, answer them, and the best answer will get a gift card. All right, before we continue, make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn on your notifications, and please, 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 for the algorithm, hit that like button. Hop, hop, boys. Let's, Let's go. go. to open up on perhaps what is the most Cantonese dish of all time, yeah. the bone tai fan, AKA clay pot rice. Yeah. So we got the dry salted pork belly and Chinese sausage clay pot rice. And then over here now, what do we got? Because this is this is crazy looking. Here we have the la yu yok bang, which is a salted fish and pork patty on rice wow. clay pot. Wow. You guys, I do gotta give a shout out to the Toy San because I believe Bo Tai Fan originated from Toy San. Toy San is a very specific city, village in Guangdong province. Bo Tai Fan. Once you get older, you definitely learn to appreciate funkier, more like different angle flavors, more right, unorthodox right. flavors. All right, here's the thing about Bo Tai Fan, and this is one of the dishes that actually is being served a lot less at a lot of Cantonese restaurants. Because I've been in a Canton restaurant, they're saying, oh, we don't serve the Bo Tai Fan anymore because it takes too long to cook, it's too much trouble. You have to have the heat really high, you need to have these clay pots, it takes 20 minutes to cook, we had to order this before. So, this is one of those dishes that, to be honest, is not really making it through to the future. Toy Song cauliflower with pork jowl. This is another dish you can't find at every spot. Only the most authentic spots are gonna carry the choice on cauliflower. I didn't eat cauliflower growing up, did you? I did, Chinese, okay. I mean, Chinese culture, this is our broccoli. Right. Would you guys say that Toy San food generally is very, very light in flavor? Because that that flavor in that Toy San cauliflower dish is very light, yeah. very inoffensive. I could see some people calling it bland, but I would just call it very natural. Yeah. This is a good lead in for our conversation real quick about Cantonese food flavors. Sometimes when you're used to eating like the stronger flavor Chinese food, such as like Sichuan food, you might try Cantonese food and be like, oh, there's not enough flavor here. How do we balance like what's a lot of flavor, what's natural tasting, what's right. clean because tasting? Because obviously right now you would say maybe that is one of the reasons why Cantonese food had a decline is because like other people wanted those flavors that more hit them right. immediately, right? Right. Cantonese food is the one Chinese cuisine where like the flavors are actually, you know, more on the more bland side. You know, we like to use a lot of like soy sauce and a lot of other stuff. It still tastes really good. Right. Know, more natural. How about, this? How about this? I would not describe Cantonese food as bland because that word bland has kind of a negative connotation. I would call it subtle. Subtle. subtle nuanced. Flavor. Subtle. Nuanced. Subtle Asian flavors instead of Kai bowl. Okay. All right, anyway. Kai bowl, put it in my bowl. Isn't bowl mean like bowl? Bowl mean bowl? What does guy bowl mean? When you say bow tai fan, bow is... Bow is a bowl. Yeah. So, do you think it had anything to do with... Oh, bow is pot. Chicken, chestnut, sizzling pot. Let's go. Mmm, saucy. Oh, I love this one. Very flavorful, but in a subtle way. I don't know if that makes sense. You know, like like we've been saying, like Cantonese was very subtle, but this one has a lot of flavor due to the sauce. Uh -huh. So, you know, um, the mushroom is really good. This is one of my favorite sizzling pot dishes. And I like how saucy it is, and I love the mixture with mushroom, because I think, to me, chicken and mushroom is one of the best combinations out there. I encourage uh, ABCs who kind of shied away from it to come back and try this stuff, though. Yeah. Continuing through different aspects of Cantonese food, here we are at the Hong Kong style brunch section. Not dim sum, but the brunch section. Guys, we are looking at, obviously, your classic 
uh, bolo yao, which is a pineapple bun with a butter slice in it. Yeah. But then you've really got to get it up a notch. <laughs> Can I tell you, I have never seen this before. Here we have the bolo bao chicken steak with the fried egg oh, it's inside. chicken steak, it's not pork chop. Yeah. No, 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 this oh. is a chicken steak. Oh, wow. This... Now, what is your opinion on using bolo baos, aka pineapple buns, as buns? They are a little flaky. Yeah. They're a little dry, they're sweet. Is it more for looks, or is there a taste benefit? Oh, it for sure has a taste benefit compared to like just like a regular bun, you know? This is a new thing. I have the runny egg yolk. That's definitely kind of like a new, kind of hip American thing. What are we at, like a Chinese egg slut? Ah, that's <laughs> a joke! Let's go. Pineapple bun chicken thigh sandwich. Mmm, mmm. Got some spicy tomato mayo in there. Wow, I did not expect that. Wow. With all the sauces and tomato, it definitely doesn't make the pineapple bun dry. Wow. And with the egg yolk, the running egg yolk. Fun fact about the pineapple bun, there's actually no pineapple flavor. It's a sweet kind of crust on top that looks like a pineapple. Do you think that the future of Cantonese food is that there's gonna be less spots, but the quality spots that do it the right way survive? Oh, most definitely, man. They're gonna see what the people want and try to, you know, elevate it in a way where, you know, they can keep them still. I think that these dishes are more meant for, like, the second generation or the younger generation. It's great to see Cantonese restaurants that have a higher price point, but also higher quality. Higher standards. I, higher standards. I think that's really important. In my opinion, that's the only way it's gonna survive. Because you're either gonna be doing a good version for $9, or you're gonna be doing a super quick version for $3. The $6 point is out. A lot of Cantonese businesses are gonna have to start thinking about what the second generation Cantonese people wanna eat. Who's going out to eat? The millennials. So what do the Cantonese millennials wanna eat? What, what do the Cantonese <laughs> millennial want to eat? Maybe they the pastrami pineapple bun sandwich. It was pretty good too. Wow. You guys, that was pretty good, but it wasn't better than the chicken thigh one. Chicken steak? <laughs> the Macau pork chop sandwich. Yo, aside from it sitting there for a while and uh, it all falling apart, I thought the flavor was pretty good. Do you think using the bolo baos as a sandwich bun is only going to be a more popular trend? Yeah, I guess what I'm trying to see is every generation always puts their own twist on old classics, right? Yeah. But it seems like our generation is not putting a twist on this. Pineapple bun with butter slice. That's breakfast. It's like butter and toast. There is something about the classic that still just reminds me of a cheese slice in New York City. The British have the, the you know, toast, and then the Cantonese have the bolo yao. Wrapping up the Hong Kong breakfast section, we have, these are some breakfast breakfast foods. If you guys know Cantonese food, there's so many different types of cuisine from dim sum to the breakfast foods, to the brunch foods, to the lunch foods, to the dinner food. It's like every three, four hours got to shift the menu. Yo. This is Tang Tai Chok, AKA the Sam Pan. I recently discovered this in the past like three years. It's my favorite joke. That's my opinion. You got squid, peanuts. Growing up as a kid when I was in Macau, they served this a lot in the street. You know, like in little carts, you know, they make it for you fresh. Right, right. Macau and Hong Kong. That's probably one of the most unique things you'll see. The curry, curry fish, fish balls. balls. Oh, curry anything. Everywhere. Yeah, curry anything. I would say that is spicier than the fish balls you'll get on the streets of Hong Kong. Those are a little bit toned down. This one's... This Macau, one's Macau's are pretty spicy. Yeah. yeah. That's like that? Yeah. Wow, okay. That's one of the best curry fish balls I've ever had. I like that one. Guys, to me, I have one of my beloved churn fun dishes. This, to me, blew my mind the first time I saw it in Hong Kong. And then I was just like, wait, are those just rice noodles with peanut sauce and hoisin sauce and exo sauce? And then it was like, has this sweet peanutty flavor and it really doesn't really sound like something you would eat for breakfast or that you would really think of, but it's really popular. It's a staple cuisine, keeps Hong Kong moving. One of my favorite dishes. Man. I like it, man. Simple, sweet, amazing texture. HK breakfast would be churn fun and a ball on yao and a yep. mai tai and then you're good to go. I have an idea. I think if they stir fry those bits, it would add another layer to it. Like add some wok hay to the chopped up churn fun. You need innovation to avoid elimination. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's, That's hard. See, a lot of people don't want to have this conversation. They're going to miss it. By the way, we're all pro Cantonese food here, but we just gotta be real. Let's be critical, okay? It's a funny Cantonese dish. A funny dish? A funny Cantonese is dish. This a di is this a joke? Is this a Cantonese joke? No, it's joke. Have you heard the one about Pei Lu? No. It's an inside joke. Ah, <laughs> that's, that's the original joke. <laughs> Hear what the t-shirt said to the wet pants? 
<laughs> Sup, fool? You know how you say flower bridge? Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say that one. Yo, these jokes have been around since maybe we're like, I was like, for 20 years. You gotta give it to Drake. Drake had the most updated Cantonese rap line ever. Let the lights dim some. You know what? This line, how about this line? Because we like rhymes. If you're the originator, it's hard to be the innovator. If being the originator of something makes it difficult to be the innovator, but you need innovation to avoid elimination, just look at the way that algorithm moves. If you're the originator, it's hard to be the innovator. You need innovation to avoid elimination. We're trying to spell it out for you. We're trying to, uh, we're trying to avoid elimination through innovation, guys. To spell it out. You guys understand what we're doing. All right. Okay, moving on to round four. We are reaching the Hong Kong Cafe dinner foods. Hong Kong Cafe is typically like a mishmash of different regions, but everything's viewed through sort of like an HK lens. I mean, just to show you guys how diverse uh, Hong Kong Cantonese cuisine has gotten, Andrew, you said that this has a chiu jiao dish. So these are the basil clams, and this is like a dish that you've probably had if you've eaten, uh, had a seafood dinner at a Chinese restaurant, but it has chiu jiao roots. This is a yeah. very classic Dai Pai Dong dish. Yeah, yeah. Dai Pai Dong is basically like a really big family dinner where you have like a ton of family style dishes. Everybody just gets together. But, 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 but it is cooked on a gigantic, extremely fiery wok. Yeah. Like this big, you know, the wok. It's almost like a mega wok. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess the closest thing. <laughs> Do the Dai Pai Dong. Do the Dai Pai Dong. That'd not be the new dance, huh? Um, and you gotta have a serious face on just. Uh, the amount of flavor that this dish has is actually in the upper tier. Like, yeah. like you would not say yeah. this dish is bland. This is Hoshu AG. This is originally a Sichuan dish. Uh, it's supposed to be very spicy and, and make your mouth water, like in the name. But this is done in a Cantonese style, so it's probably toned down. I actually really enjoyed that. Yeah, sometimes it's nice to have a Sichuan dish that is not so spicy and crazy. Yeah. Here we have the baked seafood pasta. Whether the Italians took this from the Chinese people or the Chinese people took it from, you know, British the, people. The British people took it from the Italians. I don't know. But here we have baked seafood pasta. You know, Cantonese is more known for like the baked pork chop rice. So you would get this at any Chinese Cantonese cafe or restaurant. You know, I thought dishes like this always kind of baffled me growing up because I was like, wait, why in Hong Kong are we eating baked spaghetti with cheese on it and stuff? But hey man, it's from the European influence. Pork chop is the most popular yeah. with the with the bolognese. No sauce. I'm in the sauce like bolognese. I'm in the sauce like bolognese. Tory Lanez from Toronto. Honey garlic pork chops. This is probably out of everything that we've had today, the most like commonly ordered dish by, I guess, about everybody. We've been in this position where we're Cantonese and we show some of our non-Cantonese or non-Asian friends, you know, Hong Kong cafe food, and they're not always impressed to be honest, because not always does the food have a lot of flavor or maybe it's weird Hong Kong take on Western food. And last but not least, of course, we've got salted egg yolk prawns. This is actually, surprisingly, one of their most popular dishes here at Alice's Kitchen. You guys, we're, in my opinion, in my opinion on this Cantonese food journey through the different, you know, three hour, four hour segment menus, that's been my favorite, that was my favorite thing of all the things we had. The gamsaha, aka the salted egg yolk fried shrimp prawns were my favorite. No cap. No cap. <laughs> Anto's no. got jokes. Yeah. Not saying those were the best jokes. And we'll get you on Netflix. I said we right? got jokes. We got jokes. We got jokes. Hey, Canto's can joke. <laughs> Another one. I'm killing. I'm rolling up. I'm on fire. Bow, bow, bow. That was the best version of salted egg yolk shrimp I've personally had. Eggy, it was salty, it was salted egg yogi. Eggy. It was bumpy. I'm just saying that I honestly could give that a five out of five. Come to Alice's Kitchen, and if nothing else, please come get the salted egg yolk shrimp, in my opinion. I give that a, a six out of five. Alice's Kitchen is such a great representation of Hong Kong food quality that they're delivering it at, the amount of dishes that they have, the way they represent the culture, I think this is where it's headed. And places like Alice's Kitchen are going to continue the tradition of Hong Kong food. Not every spot is as well ran, not every spot delivers the quality 
but this spot does. In Hong Kong and Macau, the menus are much more specialized. Yeah. Like people are only gonna have dim sum. Yeah. People are only gonna have that breakfast ta ta tang thing. Like they're, they're not gonna cover everything. Like the hours are only open for that specific time frame. You know, okay. for that and, certain food. And let me pose this question, guys. Not all cuisines have this amount of variety to them. Why do Cantonese do that? I'm gonna go ahead and say Cantonese American menus are the biggest on planet Earth. Right, look at this booklet. This is a book. It's a it's a picture. Just look, look at no, the it's numbers. Like a science so, oh my God! Look, I'm looking at the numbers. Like, two forty. We're at two fifty. Two fifty items. Now, items. now my question is: I love it when a restaurant does all two fifty well, or even a hundred dishes well. But then bad sometimes is when like quality's not that high. You know? It's like getting like six bachelor's degrees or something like that. Like. You probably don't know any of them at the same level as a master's or PhD. Right, right, right. At the end of the day, we may or may not have the right answers to all of these, but you know, we're investigating and we're doing the best we can. That's what we're here to do, guys. Hot, hot boys, man. This is something that we're gonna be diving into for a few videos because it does kind of require some more time to really wrap our heads around this. Because like we said before, let me reiterate, it is a fact. New Cantonese restaurants are on the decline. A lot of big Cantonese restaurants are closing down. And not as many of the new Chinese restaurants are Cantonese. And I do think a lot of second generation Cantonese and Cantonese people in general are eating other people's types of food, which there's nothing wrong with. But if we feel like Cantonese cuisine and culture is somewhat decreasing and dwindling in some way, and you're worried about it, these are questions you need to wonder. Just don't want Cantonese food to become like no shade but Ford Motors because Ford Motors is not popping anymore and it was the originator everybody kind of respects it but Ford's not taking credit for Tesla I think you know if you're a Cantonese man you got to really you know support your own culture make your friends try Cantonese food like we said bring them to a good high elevated Cantonese restaurant and just let them try it and at the end of the day if they still don't like it something probably wrong with them right I mean you know, <laughs> <laughs> but, but you guys, uh, we just wanted to end on a poignant note, a thoughtful note, but you guys, episode number two has us checking out some of these second generation ABC Cantonese spots that are trying to evolve the cuisine. So I'm pretty excited for that. Hey, and shout out to Alice Kitchen for keeping it pretty traditional, but taking it up one notch up. Okay, everybody, in the comments down below, you guys let us know what you think Cantonese restaurants can do to become more popular again. Now, that could be like a creative new dish or bringing something back or, or fusing something together. You guys come up with it. The best comment will get a Amazon gift card emailed to them and we'll message you guys. So make sure you leave your Instagram handle down below as well. You guys, this was episode one in our Cantonese series. I'm looking forward to episode two, episode three, and onward. Something very close, near, dear to our hearts. This was another investigative episode of Hot Pop Boys. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, we out. Peace. Bram that, man, if we cut it up. You got it out. All right, all right, all right. You, got, you, got, you got a Grammy. All right. Oh, show me a little bit about it. This guy, this guy, look at it.